Hey guys, what is going on? This is WrestleMania back with another episode. Fans are wondering what happened to Kofi Kingston's chest, speculating he may have been involved in some sort of accident. As we'll see, Kofi isn't the only wrestler who has a physical anomaly. Join us now as WrestleMania looks at wrestlers who have physical anomalies. Note that this video doesn't include wrestlers with conditions such as acromegaly or dwarfism which led to the unusual size variants of competitors such as Andre the Giant and Hornswoggle. Number 1. Kofi Kingston Fans wondering what's up with the dreadlocked Dynamo's chest have had some interesting theories about Kofi's sunken chest. Some of these include a car accident or some type of anomaly from birth. Even Kofi has had fun trying to explain his chest condition. When a fan asked what happened, Kofi tweeted, At WWE The Big Show chopped me in the chest in 09 and it hasn't been the same since. However, the reality is that Kofi suffers from pectus excavatum, defined as a structural deformity of the anterior thoracic wall in which the sternum and ribcage are shaped abnormally. This produces a caved-in or sunken appearance of the chest. It can either be present at birth or develop after puberty. Pectus excavatum can impair cardiac and respiratory function and can cause pain in the chest and back. That doesn't mean Kofi agrees. In August 2019, Kofi tweeted a clarification. Ah, fellow Sternomonian, so this is what I know. A lot of people think that I have pectus excavatum or concave chest. Not true. My sternum is not concave at all. Rather, my pectoral muscles connect from closer to the sides of my sternum rather than the center of my sternum. Number 2. Chris Jericho Le Champion suffers from pectus excavatum, but that hasn't stopped fans from posting some incredible theories as to what happened to him. These include Jericho stopping weightlifting, leading to a change in his physique. A similar theory is that Jericho shifted his workouts to yoga, leading to a different look, while another theory blames the aging process for the new look. While the hard-hitting life of a professional wrestler may aggravate this anomaly, its root cause is pectus excavatum. Number 3. The Pectus Excavatum Posse There are several other wrestlers who are believed to suffer from Pectus Excavatum, including The Undertaker, Ric Flair, and Scott Steiner. However, in Steiner's case, his unusual-looking chest may also be due to surgery he had back in 2007 after he suffered a torn trachea during a match in Puerto Rico. In an interview with the Baltimore Sun, Steiner recalled the harrowing surgery he underwent. The next time I woke up, I had been in an induced coma for two days because the pain would have been so bad, I felt like I was choking. It felt like I was going to drown because I couldn't get any air. They pulled the ventilator out of my throat and I woke up. They told me they cut through my lat, basically split my ribs in half, and then cut through my lung, sewed my trachea up. Then they put a tube in my lung to drain for two weeks. I just swelled up. I looked brutal, like a 300-pound fat guy. Number 4. Mick Foley one of wrestling's most legendary stories involves the night Mick Foley lost part of his ear during a match with the late great Vader back in 1994. Foley worked a spot known as The Hangman, where he intentionally entangled his head in the ropes. In his memoir, Have a Nice Day, Foley recalled performing the maneuver in order to put on a more entertaining match. I launched myself into the ropes and prepared to catch my head and neck between the second and third ropes, sail my body over, and using precise timing and my own body's momentum, twist the second rope over the third. Although it is a planned maneuver, it's no illusion, as the man is actually hanging by his neck. There was no doubt about it, it was a difficult move, but even more so in WCW because they didn't actually use ring ropes, they used elevator cables covered with a rubber casing and when the cables were entwined, they were almost impossible to pull apart. Foley quickly realized the tremendous peril he was in. Instead of the normal pain that I had long ago accepted as a consequence of this exciting move, it felt as if my neck was in a vice. The ropes were squeezing the sides of my neck and I was quickly passing out. I felt like I was going to die right there in the sport hall in Munich. With his head trapped in the ropes, Foley knew he had to act fast or he would pass out and possibly suffer brain damage. With that grisly knowledge in mind, I made one last effort to get myself free and wrenched my head from between the ropes. I later likened it to a fox that chews off its paw to escape a trap. I lay on the floor momentarily and then I got to my knees. Blood was literally pouring out of my right ear. Foley continued working the match until he was able to get medical treatment. 
I underwent a four-hour operation, during which all the cartilage from the missing ear was removed and placed in a man-made pocket an inch above my remaining lobe. By doing this, the cartilage would remain vital for a reconstructive operation somewhere down the road. In another example of Foley's devotion to the sport, he had a choice of winning the WCW Tag Team Championship with Kevin Sullivan or undergoing surgery to reattach his ear. Foley chose the championship match. Number 5. Yukon Eric Foley isn't the only wrestler who's lost an ear in the ring. During a match in Montreal in the early 1950s, wrestler Walter Kowalski was battling Yukon Eric, aka Eric Holmback, when an accident changed Yukon's life and led to Kowalski's legendary nickname of Killer Kowalski. In a 1989 interview with the Chicago Tribune, Kowalski recalled the night he took off Eric's ear. I was leaping off the rope, and Yukon Eric, who had a cauliflower ear, moved at the last second. I thought I missed, but all of a sudden, something went rolling across the ring. It was his ear. Yukon Eric was hospitalized, and at a promoter's request, Kowalski visited the man he'd accidentally maimed to apologize to him. Meanwhile, reporters were eavesdropping on the conversation. Kowalski recalls what happened next. There was this 6'5", 280-pound guy, his head wrapped like a mummy, dwarfing his bed. I looked at him and grinned. He grinned back. I laughed, and he laughed back. And then I laughed harder and left. The next day, the headlines read, Kowalski visits Yukon in the hospital and laughs. And when I climbed into the ring that night, the crowd called out, You animal! You killer! And the name stuck. Number 6. Zach Gowan This gutsy grappler didn't let adversity stop him from pursuing his dream of competing in the sport of kings. Despite having his left leg amputated at the age of 8 due to cancer, Zach Gowan pursued a career in professional wrestling hoping to emulate the styles of Rey Mysterio and Shawn Michaels. Gowan worked as Tenacious Z, including a campaign in TNA Wrestling before he hit the big time, working for WWE in 2003. After exiting the WWE in 2004, Gowan worked in a number of promotions including TNA Wrestling, Ring of Honor, and Juggalo Championship Wrestling. Gowan competed in the eighth season of American Ninja Warrior in 2016, but did not make it to the city finals. Number 7. Zeus Best known for his many appearances in Hollywood films, Tom Tiny Lister appeared as Hulk Hogan's silver screen adversary Zeus in the Hulk Hogan vehicle No Holds Barred before Vince McMahon decided to put Zeus into a WWF ring. As Zeus, Lister feuded with Hogan for several months in 1989 and later returned briefly to WCW in 1996 as part of the alliance to end Hulkamania. In addition to his menacing size, Zeus is blind in one eye, the result of being born with a detached and deformed retina. Lister resented his anomaly but later came to view it as a blessing, as revealed in a 2014 interview with Grantland. Born blind with a detached and deformed retina, Lister was once ashamed of his right eye. He wore tinted glasses. He even cursed God. Then one day he stopped hiding and took off the shades. I started doing these movies and God said, you thought it was a curse. It was a blessing, he says. My eye became my trademark in Hollywood. Number 8. Robert Gibson One half of the legendary tag team The Rock and Roll Express, Robert Gibson suffers from strabismus commonly known as lazy eye. According to Medicine.net, strabismus is defined as a condition in which the visual axes of the eyes are not parallel and the eyes appear to be looking in different directions. In divergent strabismus, or extropia, the visual axes diverge. In convergent strabismus, or estropia, the visual axes converge. Gibson hasn't let this stop him from wrestling, and he continues working to this day alongside Rock and Roll Express teammate Ricky Morton. Number 9. The Messiah William Welch made a career working in a variety of hardcore wrestling promotions, including Extreme Pro Wrestling, Combat Zone Wrestling, and Assorted Independence. However, in 2002 he suffered the most hardcore of injuries when two unknown assailants entered his home, maiming him for life. According to a 2003 story, the two men knocked on his apartment door and he let them in, thinking they were friends of his roommate. He soon found out differently as the two attacked him. One of them had him in a chokehold and the other grabbed a pair of gardening shears which would be used to cut his thumb off. He fought them off and made his way to the door. They managed to stop him and one of them attempted to cut Messiah's penis off. They finally left and the assailants actually took his thumb with them. 
The assailants ran off with the Messiah's thumb, and word has it that the attack may have been orchestrated by XPW promoter Rob Black. At the time, there were rumors circulating that the Messiah was involved with Black's wife, leading to speculation Black ordered the attack. The case was covered by the TV series America's Most Wanted, but the case remains unsolved. The Messiah continued wrestling, and his contributions to hardcore wrestling led to his induction in the CZW Hall of Fame and the Southern California Deathmatch Hall of Fame in 2019. Well guys, there you have it, wrestlers with physical anomalies. This list is by no means exhaustive, so let us know if you'd like to see more. Be sure to leave your comments, and don't forget to subscribe to our channel, follow us on Instagram and Twitter, and I'll see you next time for some more wrestling content.